they give you the meiosis, whether it's the you know, like an egg or a sperm, all the chromosomes will consist of two chromosomes. Then the chromosomes will line up in pairs. So far, everybody with it, instead of a straight line. And then a member of each pair will move. Half will go to one cell, half will go to another. Okay? Different. Now what do you do? Now you've got two cells. Each cell has only 23 chromosomes. But each chromosome still consists of two chromatids. And now, to finish up meiosis, what do each of these cells do? They do a mitosis. All the chromosomes line up in a single line, and then the chromatids separate. And what you're going to end up with, in this case, you're going to end up with four cells, each of which has 23 chromosomes. Everybody with me on that? So in meiosis, you do two divisions. The first one, they line all the chromosomes are like duplicated the DNA. But instead of lining up in a single line, they first line up in pairs. You know, chromosome 3 twice, chromosome 3, chromosome 7 twice, chromosome 7. And then they separate and you have two cells. Okay? And each of those cells will now undergo a mitosis because each chromosome has two chromatids. And so the chromatids pull apart and you end up with four cells, each of which have 23 chromosomes. Okay, nice and easy. Now, if you're doing this with, with sperm, the four cells will all become sperm at the end. And nice picture here. Starting at the end of the tubule, remember things move from the end of the tubule inward. So the number, this is a nice way of 2n means 46 chromosomes. So at the edge, these spermatogonium are always dividing and dividing. One always stays behind to what? Don't worry about their names. To divide again, right? So you never run out of spermatogonium. And one of them will go on to become sperm. It has 46 chromosomes. Each has two chromatids. First, meiosis. You're going to split cells, but each cell now has 23 chromosomes, each with two chromatids, then you'll do a mitosis, and you'll end up with, what, four cells. And these four cells each have 23, and they will change their shape and become sperm. So, for each spermatogonium, if you start with it here, which they call a primary spermatocyte, before it divides, and cells, you will get four sperm, or spermatids. And what the next picture shows is really nice, which is, as you're making sperm, they have new proteins on their surface, and they have to be protected. And I would have done this a little different, but everything you see in yellow, they have a little connection here. The yellow are the sustenticular, or nerve cells. Notice they're protecting developing cells. This is a nerve cell up here in yellow. This is a nerve cell down here in yellow. And when the sperm finally start to mature, the nerve cells do what? They open up and they let the sperm swim out into the center of the tubule. And that will take them where? That will take them to the center of the tubule. They don't really swim out. I, I use the term swim. Fluid pushes them out and they end up in the epididymis. They're not going to move their tails unless they're in an alkaline medium. So that's only at ejaculation. When sperm leaves the epididymis, what's going to happen? They're going to get fluid from the prostate and the seminal vesicles, which is alkaline, and they're going to ejaculate, and the alkaline fluid makes the sperm tails move. Okay. So that's spermatogenesis or meiosis. Let me do it very quickly 